that my son committed suicide. And he committed suicide on my veranda. And my two small children are the ones who found him. And they kept telling me, Mommy, come and see. Kuna game mbaya chichi anacheza. And it was a Sunday evening and we had just had supper. And I thought that it was just one of his antics because he was a difficult boy. He became very difficult after he failed his Form 4 exams. And so finally when they, they kept going and coming, going and coming, and I was in my room. When I went outside, I found my son hanging on my, on my veranda. And the, the most wicked, wicked, wicked sight in my life is to see his tongue hanging almost up till here <laughs> because he had I screamed and I climbed up immediately and I collected him and I put him down and I rushed I started calling his sisters to take him to hospital so we rushed to hospital, but um, when we reached there, the hospital told us that um, nobody actually was doing anything. They checked it. I told them to put him on oxygen because he was lacking oxygen and his fingers had become gray because there was no oxygen. That usually happens after two minutes or about six minutes of lack of oxygen in the, in the body. So I walked out and I just went and I told God, God, please help me. Please help me. So when I went back, they were not doing anything. I asked them, what, why aren't you doing anything? And then it just dawned on me that actually it was over. And as it was over, there was no need for oxygen. And there was no need for anything else. And so we had to wait there until we reported to the chief, reported to Embakasi police, and wait until about three o'clock when the police car vehicle came to take my son and put him in a car vehicle car and take him to the mortuary that is the most wicked hateful thing that you ever need to see youth akuna kitungumu sana ile wezi kuongea there is nothing there is nothing so hard that, can, that cannot be discussed. Whether it was sexual violence, which I came to discover that he had been sodomized, whether it was bullying in school, whether it was peer pressure, whether it was failing his exams. So when he failed his exams, first of all, his uh, knowing depression makes you have all the symptoms that are mentioned in that paper. All of them, he had them. He would come to the sitting room, he's dressed in his underwear, he doesn't care, he doesn't come out of bed. So I used to insist he comes and eats with us. He doesn't want to eat with us. And so they become very difficult when depression hits. So recognize, please, when somebody starts shutting down, there's a problem. This boy had grown up as a very healthy, loving, fun-loving boy, full of love, full of laughter, full of jokes. But something happened somewhere along the line and he just started withdrawing. And I kid you not, within six months, he had committed suicide. Youth, I want to tell you, you know, you can think that you're the one in the problem. There's a place you will reach, you will be unable to pull yourself out again. So before you reach that pit, before you reach that bottom, please ensure that you have talked to somebody. Please ensure that you have shared with somebody. There is nothing too hard. There is nothing too hard. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. So anything that you are going through is not new. It has happened to somebody else. And it can be solved. We buried my son, but now the after effects are the worst. Because now I kept blaming myself. What didn't I do? What did I do? I tried to be as supportive as I wanted. He refused school. One day he just said, Mami Sirudi Yoshule. And that was it. I had to look for another school for him to go to. And when he went to another school again, then he refused to attend lessons. 
and then he attends exams and then he is shocked that he fails his exams and so when we showed him his results and he came home with the results he couldn't believe it and that's when he started going downhill so the sisters his sisters my children all tried to encourage him to do other things do you can't sit do you want to go to driving school do you want to go to college do you want to draw because he was a very good artist do you want to draw what do you want to do we'll do it for you he says bado si kotiari bado si jajua i'll let you know then that day he hung himself but what it has happened the after effects is that thereafter i'm the one who hit depression i couldn't believe i couldn't think i couldn't eat <laughs> i couldn't think <laughs> how do you bury a 20 year old son a boy with mandevu somebody how do you bury your son just how do you bury your son he in august this year we went to fix his grave and there's nobody who feels the pain apart from a mother apart from a brother apart from a sister nobody feels that pain you might think that you're in a pit but you're not there is always help i want to thank the government for for making mental health a priority because we would have lost so many when we were going to collect my son that day we were so many parents we left at 5 in the morning because we were going to siaya and i tell you six parents were there because of suicide the six parents and those that were in there that were waiting to be collected the following day some were being brought in we cannot lose youth for something that is gas got a solution we cannot lose you who have got the energy to build our country for something that has got solutions i beg you to engage with the processes that are available for us for the options that are open for us and please so that you don't hurt your parents also because even when you go the pain remains with us the pain remains with the sisters the pain remains with the brother and the stigma that is associated with suicide i personally don't care <laughs> i personally don't care what anybody thinks about me and that is why i said that just to honor my son's memory i will speak about mental health thank you very much requested to do this talk i decided that uh, because you are always used to a lot of lectures you see long hours in lecture rooms i want to make this as very light as light as possible number one i want us to discuss mental health and i want you to look at the perspective of mental health not as the individuals who are mentally ill and being admitted to the world but the journey of life that has been mentioned and today we are going to focus on student mental health why we are going to focus on this is because more often than not your school conducts the nursing office some of you are brought to us when you are in distress some of you are brought by your parents to us and therefore these are issues that the majority of you may not realize so we want to have a talk that we will sensitize you on mental health, yes. But we also want a talk that will help you at the individual level. We will walk a journey that will demonstrate to you why is it that when you come here as students, there are inherent risks that you have that can affect your mental health, whether you are staying here in college or when you are outside. So we are going to share stories and common things that we are seeing that are affecting most of you. And those who are not affected should be allowed in the future so that going forward to don't these issues don't befall at the beginning level. So we are going to have a very light talk and uh, after the talk, uh, Salome will also take the floor and then thereafter we will take uh, probably a few questions. Eh? So why mental health? Why mental health? We want to discuss the uniqueness and challenges of medical training. You guys, when you went to primary school, you went to assistance to secondary school, and you finally came to 
a medical training college. Eh? What is the difference between medical training and all other colleges out there? We are going to see those unique issues that are there in medical training that are likely to predispose you as an individual to mental health issues. Eh? Okay? Number two, we will look at the pitfalls of making the wrong turn in life. And there will be a slide down there where we are going to share events and stories of individuals who took the wrong turn in life while in this college or other medical training colleges. Eh? This is why I'm saying it will not be you, but please take some lessons and also talk to others. At the end of this talk, we, we want to have converted you all into mentors. At the end of this presentation, you will even see what is your role in helping your colleague. It could be your classmate, it could be your roommate. Right now, before I left the world, I have just been told by one of our interns, because we have many colleagues and interns, there is an intern who is missing from Twitter for a whole month. The guy is not meeting his calls, nobody knows where he is. And these are the kind of issues that are also affecting you, okay? So, what are the consequences of the choices that you make? Those of you who are spending all your time at night raving, what is the consequence of that? Some of you are already doing online writing. Look for money, true? Or it doesn't happen here. We are going to see what is the consequence of that choice. Okay? So, every choice has a consequence. We are going also to see how do you do time rate cognition of a mental illness in yourself and in your colleague, your roommate, your desktop, all right? Or even your teacher. It doesn't mean you cannot uh, realize somebody teaching you other problem and you are other authorities. Eh? Then we will look at what are the intervention options. When you hear that someone has a mental illness, what, what options do you have? And then we will finally look at what are the resources available to us to help you remedy the situation. So in a nutshell, these uh, six bullets will guide our discussion today. Most of our slides are pictorial. So we will discuss a lot of things in pictorial form. Eh? I don't want to bother you with a lot of literature. So this is why I told you it's a light discussion. Eh? Now, uh, I hope you can all see that. Eh? What we are trying to tell you by this slide is that it is increasingly becoming very easy to die young. It is increasingly becoming easy to die here in college. So you are very proud you here. I don't know whether you guys have come in those big boxes eh? with luggage, shopping and stuff. Eh? Does that happen? It will be very unfortunate if you go home in a casket. You come with a box, but you go home in a casket. And it is happening. Dying young it is, is, is now becoming very easy. This is somebody who was discovered in the room dead, and that is happening in your colleges among students of all levels. Okay? So, this is a, a slide that is trying to tell you that you now have a choice. I'm told that some of you are first years. Why do you have fun focusing on first years? But it's good that we have a, a fine meet of all of you guys. Eh? It's because sometimes when you come here, you come as a very innocent guy from high school, you come from your rural area or your urban area, but when you come here, you transform into a completely different animal. Either because of your own characteristics or you are influenced by others. So, the, 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 the choice you make will either determine whether you succeed and become a successful nurse. Like when Salome was studying here, I was hoping some of you would be observing even how she is smart and confident, isn't it? But can you imagine she was one day wearing a uniform? It looks like it is not possible, yeah? So, she is here as a mentor. To try and tell you, the direction you take will determine whether you become a successful clinician or a failure. And we are going to demonstrate how failures behave, and you'll see them. And from today, when we finish this talk, in your dining halls, in your sleeping areas, in your classrooms, be very observant. Look at your colleague students. You are going to see some of them here in this presentation. 
but we want to reduce the number of failures. Eh? And by failure, I am not talking about academics. I'm not a lecturer, right? Me, by failure, I am talking about failure or success in life, right? So, when you come to college, yeah, when you come here, first of all, you have come as a very clean student. So, what you experience first is what we call a culture shock. You have come probably from a rural area, and you come into an urban life. That already in itself is a shocker. People have come from areas where you have probably never had water, throwing water, electricity, thermal roads, isn't it? Or you could have come from a highly urbanized area, and all of a sudden you are thrown in Muranga, which is a small rural town. That is called the culture shock. That culture shock has a direct impact eh, on the decisions you make and what direction you take and who you become. The other one is that when you come, some of you are in boarding schools, you are under the care of your parents, isn't it? But now when you come here, you start what we call independent existence. You are now on your own. Those of you who swim, eh? you know there is a deep and a shallow end. Eh? You can imagine somebody who is not a swimmer. You have come from home, you are thrown into the deep. And what are the options? You either swim or drown. Now, you guys have come from home, your parents were taking care of your fees. They were uh, in school, they, they knew what to eat. But now I am told most of you are deciding outside college, isn't it? So you guys have to know whether the, the, the bills are paid. And you pay the rent. Electricity bills, maybe you have to eat. You have to time yourself so that you are in the right place in class. So that in itself is giving. As an independent existence entity, it's a challenge when you come here. And some of you now fail at that level because you are not used to that independence. You start making the wrong choices. Eh? The, the other issue, of course, is finances. And later on, you are going to see some of you, when you come, probably you are used to be given pocket money when you are going to high school, but it's just for birthday, isn't it? But now, when you have rented a house in town, you have to buy food, pay bills. Isn't it? So, the issue of financial management and how you manage yourself is also another challenge and we are going to see the consequences of that. Also, groupings. When you came here, you came here as an individual. Where do you come from? Eldoret. When you came here, you found people from all other corners of the country. Didn't you? But I'm sure all your friends are not from Eldoret. So, what made you decide which group to associate with? And what is that group doing? So you might be in a positive group that does positive things when you're outside college. Or you might be in a group that is painting the dark red all the night, all night, from Monday to Friday, drinking, raving, smoking weed and shisha, isn't it? I'm saying this because some of you have been brought to our department eh? under the influence of shisha, under the influence of weed, and we are going to see them, right? as we get their picture. So if you have been brought to us, your picture is, your photo is coming, right? So, prepare yourself. Awesome. The other issue, of course, is academic self-determination. I'm sure here you are not being fair, right? You are taken through academic in class, then you are sent over to Sarume, on the other side, there right? of the green areas. That in itself is also another shocker. Because now you have to determine your destiny through academics. Eh? Then finally, there is the exposure to medical and clinical environment. Some of you probably have never seen brand. But now here you come, after initial training, you are sent to the world, you experience patients who are dying, and you have never seen a patient die. Have you ever seen a dead body before? Then you find people are bleeding in the world, some are fighting, another one is vomiting, they even vomit on you. Okay? I have even seen people trying to change a patient, the patient slaps you. Okay? Or sometimes you want to change a patient and the other one has swept their bed to fall on the bed that has stool. All those things are happening and there are real things in them, in the clinical areas. Okay? So those are some of the experiences that can make or break. 
you as a medical student. So, what are some of the risks that you guys are exposed to that are likely to make your mental health uh, better those time? Like I have told you, you remember in the past time you said it is very easy for someone to die in Kenya. Yeah? It is extremely easy now to die yeah? and we are trying to prevent that. So why is it that there are so many risks inherent on your life as a student, as a school? Number one, most of you are now residing solo outside college. I'm sure you live in a Saudi's time, everybody was accommodated in college, so they are safety. They saved them in college, they saved them in numbers, but now one of you decides to in one corner of the town, the other one is in an extreme corner. Some of you, because you might even want to save money, you may go and even a house in a very dangerous neighborhood. Then yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I can see the group that is <laughs> in that neighborhood. Yeah? It happens to be on this side. That in itself is putting you at least as a student because of where you are staying. So you get exposed to crime. You get exposed to manipulation by that parties. I had a student approach my department where they rented the house. The landlord was taking sexual advantage of that student. The student had financial challenges. So that is a bad party that I'm talking about. If you are not accommodated in college, if such things happen, they would not happen. The other one, of course, is financial constraints. So, you come here, you are a student, but on the other hand, you expect to manage your finances. Sometimes your parents being you are in high school. So they give you fear to come here and go back. When you try to tell them now you have to rent a house, buy a star, room for food, they don't understand. Or maybe they don't have the money. You all know the financial situation in this country, yeah? So, that in itself is another uh, very big risk. Yeah? And some of you have gone into debt. Some of you have gone into debt. Yeah? And the other central manipulation I've mentioned, the other one, of course, what students are doing now is gambling. <clears throat> Most of you go to joints where they are full tables. You are not there to enjoy the game. At the end of the presentation, I'll show you what you can do to annoy me. But those of you in those school tables, you are there, either you are doing a beer game, or you are, you are betting on some few hands eh, to make money. Right? So, gambling is becoming a major, major issue. The other one is uh, the online official activities. Eh? How many of you know about online writing? I'm not, if you raise your hand, you're not, but you know that you're not doing it. I'm not asking those who are doing it. Eh? Who, who knows about online writing? You. Please open your heart now. Open your eyes. You don't know about online writing. You guys are trying to make money through online writing. It is obvious that you are doing exams for foreign students for money. There is nothing wrong with that, by the way. The only challenge is that you are a student, a day student here, isn't it? But for those who are doing online writing, the client on the other side in the West, because of the different time zones, when you, during night hours here, it's clear that in the US, okay? So what do you do? You have to be away because they post the work at night. Eh? Again, internet speeds are higher at night. Eh? So you will find someone who is doing online writing and the guys who don't attend class because they have been away the whole night doing assignments for calling students to post to them. As you want to sleep, another one pops up to do it. The more you stay awake, the more you make money. But you never attend class. The other one that students are doing is forex trading. This is now the in College and university students are now all in forex. You know what forex trading. You may not want to say it now, but I know you all want to go forex trading. There is nothing wrong with it. But what I can tell you, forex trading is, is a regularized company. Forex trading for you as an individual. You will be making 2,000, the following day you lose 5. Then you make 5, the following day you lose 10. Because you are competing against major multinational uh, giants that do forex trade and they have professionals in their offices. Now here you are alone on your phone trying to make money. But you will never make it in life if you 
you stop training as a clinical officer, as a records person, or as a nurse, thinking you will ever make money group on like writing or foreign training. So the, the other issue is the urban scene. You guys, Murana may look like a small town, but I am the one who does mental status assessment for all matter cases in this town. Last year, one of the persons who was brought by the CID was a great officer, trained in this college. What did he do? Because of this nightlife and clubbing, they went to town, some girls had graduated from another university, they drank the whole night. Okay? Then when the guy was about to sleep at 4 a.m., he was caught by the friends. One of the girls is not responding. He's unresponsive in the room. So the guy rushed there. He came to the hospital, stole a few granules and a few fluids. A kind of a boy, a boy, a Then after some minutes, they found this guy is unresponsive. They rushed to cash him. The nurse said, cash him, they are new guys are part of this history. Who are you receiving? And they told they were told this is a body. So from that point, his dead on arrival was a criminal case. When the CID, so when I was, who was brought for mental assessment, the clinical officer. These things are all happening because of the urban life scene, life. You guys are painting the town bed, clubbing from Monday to Monday, yeah? <coughs> using a lot of substances that we are going to see, a lot of sexual immorality, and what is now bothering us in the department, we have been brought Males, people coming in suits and ties and very smart students, and you are being accused of sodom. It may sound like theory, but this I, whatever I'm sharing with you today are the practical issues we are seeing in the department. There is nothing theoretical I'm sharing with you. Then, of course, finally, as you do those night activities as exposure to crime. Then, the other issue, of course, is your social skills. Some of you. You don't even have the contact of your roommate. You don't associate with your classmates. If you go missing, they don't know where to look for you. So, self isolation, loneliness, we all obviously culminate in mental Ill, illness and issues of suicide. That those ones we are seeing a lot amongst students. Eh? So, those are some of the risks that you are exposed to. Very quickly, I will just have a rundown on some of the things that you guys are doing in those clubs. If you walk to any of the clubs in Kenya today, especially the clubs that are trying to look, you have seen the list of the clubs which have been close to the old yeah? In a lot. I know most of you even go to such places. Eh? Obviously, the leading thing that they are selling is alcohol. So maybe will tell you that the burden that we are having among our own staff addicted to alcohol and in this function are very high. And this is happening even among the students. This year alone I have admitted a student in the psychiatry ward from this, this, this institution and I have sent to to rehab because of that. The other one is cannabis. You guys know very well about weed. I can bet everybody in this room, if we took a role for a year, the rate of use of cannabis among students is in the range of 80%. So if we do need an update in this room, and the rate of use of cannabis among females is on the rise. So we are having more girls smoking weed than even men. They are male colleagues, right? So you will hear things like church. Most of you say, because you feel you are a college student, you don't smoke long. You go for church. Okay? That is uh, the kind of cannabis that comes from Ethiopia in a place called Chachamani. That's why it's called church. Eh? So you hear things like church, local ganja, marijuana, grass, weed. Those are lingo, street names for that stuff. Eh? The other one, of course, is tobacco. But among students, what I'm finding, what some of you have said to us, is the use of Uber and Chavis. That one is put just under the lip, sublingually. But unfortunately, the people who are selling this Uber uh, you, because they want to make it more potent so that you can buy more from them, they lace it with cannabis. So, anybody in this room who is using Uber uh, or Chavis from today, you should help yourself on the line of using 
wheat. So if you see what we can, we lose to small packages, eh? And I find a division of Kidogo, Kidogo at the end of the week, then you know they are on wheat, eh? The other one are opioids, eh? So before opioids, you have that. Anybody here who goes to Alti Mokoyo and such other areas in town is aware of Mokoka? <laughs> yeah. last, last year, some of you have been saying that Mokoka and Mira, these things are obviously not illegal. They are legal. And some of you have been claiming that they have no major uh, negative effects on yourself. We are increasingly admitting people with fraudulent psychosis simply because of use of Mokoka. So those of you who have a habit of ensuring that your cheeks are full with chewing gum and Mokoka, please, by early as, as early as tomorrow, start coming to our department. You will uh, do a list so that when you start getting some courses, you will be ready for you. So please, see us tomorrow. Eh? And, and among students, when people are using a lot of weed, there is a myth that the more weed you smoke, the more you are able to perform better. Everywhere. So some of you don't attend classes, but you think once you smoke weed, eh, you will shine in your classroom. That is a fallacy. You will not have any. So, better link for exam. The other things are stimulants. I want to caution you because I know cocaine is not very common. But those of you who live along, for example, urban areas, places like here, so be about Eldoret, those of you who come from Vika Road, around the TRM, the major malls in this country, you will hear something called molly. This, this molly here, yeah? it, it's a street name, man, yeah? or ecstasy. MDMA is, is what it is, is amelorated uh, by army men. Eh? So you are going to see that being is a designer drug. In fact, one tablet costs around 2000 So if you have that kind of money or you have friends in those, some of those colleges, when you go to those uh, bashes, eh, those are the kind of, kind of things you will be exposed to. So the other one, of course, are over the counter prescriptions and products. Eh? This one I want you to be very careful about as medical people in the medical field. We are increasingly getting people who prescribe on drugs. And this is where, where you find, if you go to most courts, those covers where they keep drugs are not. But unfortunately, you guys are so clever. They lock the front doors, but you remove the panel behind them. So you keep minding the other one, okay? And bending it. So I remember you then we have had a lot of staff afflicted by use of more than drugs. Eh? The other one, of course, is Cordain. Cordain, you may think, where do I get Cordain? In the hospital, for patients and patients under chronic illnesses and pain management, they have PM118. That is Cordain. Eh? The other source of Cordain, and this is what pharmacists use a lot, the problem is in the pharmaceutical training. They are cough syrups that have Cordain, especially a certain cough syrup called Benelli. I'm not telling you this to an experiment. Eh? <laughs> These guys, they come and take six bottles of the cough syrup because they are looking for the little Cordain that is in the cough syrup. But in the clinical field, we have a lot of health workers addicted to benzodiazepines. And the other one is Clamaro. I recently had a guy from somewhere in Kirinyaga. He was brought here by a parent sent from a hospital in Kirinyaga. He has graduated from using oral Clamaro to inject them. So this is, this is the, 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 the picture that we are seeing. So basically the following few slides is just a demonstration of these things. Eh? So you will later come across cards in the form of Mira or the Boca. This one is now the almost the evening among our people. And I hope those people are not in this room there. Eh? Does that one require any explanation? <laughs> that the rate of use of alcohol among you guys is extremely high. The choice that you make will have a consequence down the line. You don't need it. Yeah? Yeah, very beautiful plant. A very beautiful plant. Recently, I had a college student who went home, branded them, and told the mother that these are export 
allowance the mother <laughs> continue to water in them. So the mother was confident to water in the flower. Until the elder brother came and told them, this is weed on the farm. Okay? <laughs> now, this is where I want to caution all of you. Yeah, these are weed parties. You go to a party, people are sharing cakes, but after one hour, you start behaving differently. You can imagine a lady like this one after attending the party for half an hour, she starts undressing, she has not taken alcohol, and people are wondering what is happening. Remember, in the, in, at the beginning, I told you about the groups you are sharing. You will go to these parties, these things are shared openly, and then if you eat them in front of a police officer, they will never know what you are eating. So, we do this. This is the thing in our colleges. Actually, it's only that I'm not started your college very well. I know the things and you guys laugh, eh? But if you have colleagues, say, in, in KU, they go to place, a place called KM. In J1, there's a place called National. So all these places, if you map them, eh? This is where these things are happening. So weed is very common if you have not been given by a friend in a party. Next time you go to a party, even if you think they are biscuits, be very careful. Otherwise, you will come back different than the way you left them. This is shisha. And this thing by law, when you pass the alcohol, that means the tobacco control act. But if you go to any joint nowadays, I don't know, in Moranga do they have it? In these high pipe joints? Are they a shisha smoking zone? Some students have even been buying these jars. So that when people come to smoke it in your room, you judge them. <laughs> Unfortunately, this thing is used a lot in the Asian countries. Eh? And in this jar, normally they put water, you put uh, tobacco and uh, flavors. Eh? But the guys in our pubs make you as high as a kite. Instead of putting water down here, they put vodka. Instead of putting tobacco and flavors alone, they put Wind. So, by the time you take one pass like this, <laughs> like a guy who has been smoking weed for a month. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and uh, what I can tell you is, if, and this is where I'm encouraging you to open your eyes. If you enter any of these parts nowadays, the people smoking shisha are guys like you, professional ladies and professional young men. Because you think it is classic. Has class, it is the big thing. You will never see people in the villages uh, affording these kind of things. It is you because you, somebody has taken you out, they have told you they will spoil you on a Friday, you want to feel how they feel with this stuff, and now you know. This one is uh, intravenous injections. Uh, what people are doing here is I told you about Pedini and Traman. But in the streets, the commonest injector boy is heroin. Then for heroin, there is nothing like experimental use. You touch this thing, you are good. And when you are good, if you go to Mombasa, for example, along the, the shores of the, the sea, they call themselves Janki, Majanki. In fact, that's the term they use. The withdrawals, the withdrawal symptoms for heroin are so bad that when you use the first time, if the withdrawal comes again, patients are brought to casualty rolling. Because, for example, the abdominal pain is so severe. We had a girl who even in Karatina. She was in Karatina University. She got such bad withdrawal. If it presents like a acute abdomen. So she was taken to theater, operated, and found the abdomen was clean. After healing for three, two, three months, she went back to healing. The, the thing struck her again. So the surgeon said, now that because this one has had the paradigm before, probably it is addition. So she, by the time she was on the theater table, is when one of the nurses was very keen. And she said, I've been using a weighty substance. I don't know what it is. But because we're in the university, my supply has run up. That is when they realized she is having opioid withdrawal symptoms. The symptoms are crazy. People come to cash with roaring. So because you all have smartphones, eh, in the evening, go and read 
only with no symptoms. Anybody coming to you with only with no, you will know them from a kilometer away. Because they have fluid flowing from every orifice. They come with Bakamasi, saliva is flowing, they tear a lot, they yawn a lot, and they hear. That is the acute withdrawal form. And when they that sleep of withdrawal in the in the in the dens where they use the Wanaita Arosu. So when they come and tell you the Gona Arosu by Asana, that is heroic withdrawal. And during that withdrawal they call it cold stacking. You guys, Taki is not very common here, but you can imagine chicken. When you defend a chicken, that is the same thing when you defend a taki. It has a lot of like pimples, eh? So when you during the draw, you look like that, defend that taki with a lot of papular arch, eh? So in a young one, call it taki. That is the withdrawal from heroin. Finally, for heroin, you will see people putting a flame. The stuff is put on a foil. They put a flame underneath and it vaporizes. So you see someone following the, the vapor to head. They call it chasing the dragon. So again, <laughs> go and read on what is chasing the dragon. But the guys from the street will not now come and tell you chasing the dragon. They just come and say, we me want to chase. So chasing the dragon is, is, is using that vaporized form. Okay? This one put too much. Went to puke in the toilet and spend the night there. <laughs> now you can imagine a guy like this, very smart in a white shirt, he's on duty at night, he reports to duty, he has taken a lot of alcohol, he, he cheats the colleague that they are feeling bad, and the next thing they find, he has slammed on them, toilet seat. Unfortunately for the tall guy, you will slam on the seat on the toilet. And then your legs will block the door. <laughs> so every time someone wants to use a toilet, they need the example. Until morning. Eh? Finally, I have told you about morning or ecstasy. Some of these drugs, and I want you also to go and read on your free time. What is date? Date, rape. You go to these parties, people are not taking alcohol, but you lose your memory for two days. By the time you gain your memory, you find you have been raped. So go and read what is baby. Go and read what is molly. What is MDMA. This you have an assignment. Eh? When you take these things, they cause hallucinations. And we call most of them hallucinogens. So you can imagine you are in class, your deputy principal is talking to you, but you are going, your brain is so foggy, you are still like you are in a disco. In this kind of scenario, that is what hallucinogens do. And this is why you find you in class, a guy wakes up, the lecturer is teaching, he climbs on top of the table, he starts dancing. That is hallucinogens for you. This is for me, the one I had mentioned to you, it's a cough syrup. Actually, Benelli is in our chemists. Most of these, they put a little bit of cocaine because of pain management. But because you want to use the cocaine in it, you are forced to use lots of bottles of cocaine. Eh? So, finally now, you are all students, eh? I hope. And you have what we call academic self-determination. Okay? What will make you not qualified? What will make you walk home without a certificate? It is those things that we have discussed. And one of the issues that we are seeing among students is that you are not conforming with the same timelines. You come here for a course that takes three years, but you spend five years. You are not conforming with timelines because you are not meeting targets, you don't attend class, and you are not even performing in the clinical areas. I don't make can tell you, you have a lot of problems with some of you. You are, you are posted to the clinical areas. Either you are the one stealing drugs, you don't come to work, and all manner of crazy behavior that will have an impact on your life. The other, of course, issue among students is that most of you are defying your academic journey. You come here by second year, you write a letter to the deputy principal or the person in, the, in charge of academics that you want to take a break for two years or one year. And you are not pregnant, you have not gotten married, you just want to go home and rest that you are tired. Eh? 
then you are police and meet. So when you come here, you find you cannot go with the young ones who are coming. So you are, you, you, what do you do? You be you desert. You stop becoming a student anymore. Like in Kwenu, when I know you came to the PC. So they keep calling you that very you go because you know very well you have no certificate. Okay? The other one, of course, failure in the exams. That one is self-explanatory. Delayed completion or ultimate abandonment of the course. Eh? Now, a few cases that we can share. Real life cases and are not take long. Okay? For the graduation, this I'm calling it a Nyandaro case because this was a girl from Nyandaro went to one of her two training colleges. She never graduated, but she went home. I don't know how. What do you, do you normally have a graduation list or a booklet during graduation? This one was able to go to a printer and inserted her name in one of the pages. The parents came, they took photos, they had a party. The father realized four years later that this one never graduated at all. <laughs> this is what I'm calling for the graduation ceremonies. People come over here from men or they They hire me from Matunda, the bus. Imagine, and they come here and take photos, even if you're with the principal, but he will leave you. <laughs> the other issue is criminal culpability, and you guys get it in the beginning of the time. You, you are telling these nine parties that we are talking about, and one of the nine parties ended in death. It is the one I was telling you about the body. The girl was brought on a rainbow. And that girl had just graduated from one of the universities. Eh? Okay? Then there is a student who was brought to us to assess. Because this guy was a chronic yeah. The guy would steal even your glasses when you are watching. <laughs> <laughs> so the college and administration sent him for us to assess. Is this guy mentally okay? Okay? Alcohol and substance. The shisha party that ended up in the way. A student came to me. Anyway, I had told you, I'll show you names that we cannot do that. Eh? But somebody went to these parties. They never took alcohol. It was just shisha joints. And at the end of the day, she came to us in a depression state, eh? with depression. But this emanated from sexual assault. And it happened in those shisha parties. Eh? Right? The other one, of course, is financial charities that you fail to manage your finances well. This was a male student. And the guy became a male prostitute. This is what I'm talking about, uh, a student who sold his dignity. Because nobody comes to this college to become a, a, that kind of thing, yeah? So, and that is exactly what happened. Mental illness, I don't remember any issues of suicide here of late, but I think there is a near it happened. Okay? And it is happening in almost all other colleges, including universities. Okay? And then a student came to me. This is why I'm saying double tragedy. In the same part of the city, somebody ended up contracting HIV and got pregnant. And you see, with that kind of trauma, what happens? She will attempt suicide then. This case begins that I'm, I'm showing you here are real cases. There is nothing theoretical here. This is what is happening. And you can now see the impact of the choices you make on your mental health. Now, how do you recognize that someone made yourself or someone else requires a help? It is this kind of sensitization programs that we have. We sensitize you. It will be good to have cleaning programs. It is also even better to have support groups. I don't know here, apart from academics, eh, whether you have other groups, like groups where you can support your colleagues, uh, activities that you do outside class, those help support, or even peers, where you have peer counselors, among us two students. Eh, that is very, very important to help someone in distress. Eh. The other one is timely stakeholder involvement, involving the college and administration, involving your parents, support groups, and your peers. Eh early before someone becomes sick. This is, uh, if you look, this is the arm. This is the forearm here. And this is very common among adolescent girls. 
people who are in psychological distress, they keep cutting and inflicting injuries on themselves. Right? And what they tell you is that when they are cutting, this one they cut and feel it breathes. They tell you that they feel a sense of relief. They feel like the tension building up within themselves is evaporating. So this is very common. Unfortunately, when they are coming to the clinical areas, someone is wearing a long strip attire. So you may not, if you are not keen, you will not see this. But it is very common. So at the end of this lecture, we will uh, check your forearms. Eh? <laughs> that is a very common scenario. In the event that you have a problem, what are the intervention options? At outpatient, you have programs, answering programs, which you should have here. If you don't have them here, come to the hospital. Then we have peer support, peer support groups. We have treatment by using medications. And then, of course, like I said, self-help groups. If we cannot manage you as an outpatient, we obviously admit you and put you either in the general medical ward or in the psychiatric ward for treatment, yeah? Then, if we find that you require further intervention, we send you to rehabilitation. Any good rehabilitation program takes 90 days minimum. So, you can imagine the impact of that on your academics. Self-care. What do you do to help yourself? You should be innovative. When you are not in India, I had, I had I, I found that is here saying I want to rap. There was another one saying he wants to dance. And there is one who said a very interesting thing that he is the either he say he's a president or something. What? There was a guy who introduced him else and said he is in charge of something. Yeah? What? Post player commissioner. I have never heard of such a term. Yeah? Why is that guy? The hostel commissioner. I found it very interesting. Yeah. If he is around, we should buy him lunch. Ah, good. Wait for me after this. So, the way he is a hostel commissioner, start having mentorship commissioners, outdoor commissioners, mentorship commissioners. You can do team building activities. There is a river down here called Salana. You can plan on a Saturday. You walk as a group. Go walk along the river, on a bit of story, two hours, and back. You will be a very healthy person that the guy who went to watch soccer in the park, go to bed, the one who went to the pool, okay? Of course, don't go to the places that you can travel, eh? Because some of you have died in those kind of places. The other one, of course, is community programs, charity work. In Aditolea, you may say I'm a student, I don't have money. But they have had is a place where they are going to visit the elder or the sick. Who are doing them? Very important. Extracurricular activities within and without the college. Then exchange programs, physical workouts. I don't know whether here you have a team. If you don't have it, you can improvise. The Geneza Mara has been doing skip ropes. Of course, you don't use the own hand, eh? but uh, skipping ropes, very important. Eh? Reading or watching non-medical or non-academic stuff. Because most of you spend all your time in the library, if I ask you when you read a very interesting novel, or what an interesting movie, you may not remember, yet you are still a human being even if you are a student. Eh? The other final one is networking. Like the student with the hostel commissioner, he should have already an email address and a link with a medical student somewhere in New York. And that guy might like one day invite him. Come and see how much we manage students in, in a college in New York. That is what is called networking. Yeah? <laughs> so I'm trying to challenge you people to stop thinking just locally, think broadly. You are all almost always online. What are these things that you do online? Yet you're not using the same online presence to network. So if you see some of you doing crazy TikToks, but you can do a medical TikTok, okay? <laughs> yeah? You can imagine if you have a clip that is encouraging, for example, mothers to seek a gynecological care or people to seek HIV programs. Those are things that can put you on another platform because they are professional and academic. Yeah? The choice is yours. 
So these are some of the activities that you can do. It will not cost you any money. Those are the building programs. You can see fellows hiking, eh? isn't it? It will not cost you anything because you should do things that are around you. Learn how to swim. If you have had a very difficult lecture on a Friday, and the following Saturday you swim for only one hour, the next week you will be very mentally healthy. Right? Uh, going to a gym. Hiking. Does that feel a little familiar? Yeah? Yeah, that's myself. Eh? That is also a group of, uh, of some of my colleagues. These are health workers eh? in this hospital. Take a good book and read. Don't just stay on your phone. It's a book called Alcoholics Anonymous. It's also called the Big Book. That book is written by people who have recovered from addiction. And there is even a huge chapter on women professionals who have recovered from addiction. The book is called the Alcoholics Anonymous or the Big Book. If you Google, you get it online. You can read the Big Book on your phone. And I think uh, I can conclude that point. Eh? So thank you very much.
uh, which is very key. We always say there is no help without mental health. No help without mental health. Uh, the presentation that we've had uh, has been quite informative. These are things that we can relate with. Through all costs. Yes, uh, we might not say that they are affecting us, uh, but uh, let's agree that uh, we can relate with what has been presented. Because uh, uh, what have been shared uh, in terms of uh, uh, some of the vices that we are likely to encounter when we are in school, some of the risks, and how we can take care of ourselves. What I would uh, plead with us uh, is that we do the right thing and we ensure that we uh, embrace the right self-care and that we see to it that we are able to uh, to uh, go and to reach and to study in the right way. Is that in order? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I can attest to all what uh, Dr. Kaburo have told us. These are things that are happening. I work in uh, the mental health department, uh, Moranga, and I'm a psychiatric nurse. Thank you. So, Kudi is one of our psychiatrist nurses and he's young in the profession and walking through the right path. And we wish that we don't have any of you becoming our, our clients. Uh, whatever Dr. Lee was talking about, when you move or you start taking drugs, you start indulging yourself in things that are very unsocial. A time comes when you start maybe directing yourself. He talked about people who have been in this college but never made it. Isn't it? Yeah, because they went the wrong path. People who involve themselves into drugs. As I speak, I normally have uh, I normally have uh, about 100 nurses in the country. And you can imagine how all of them, some have issues, and not only nurses. In the health department, we have so many people with so many problems. They are clients of Dr. Bobo. They go there at personal level. Some have been taken them because of a figure mission. And before I continue, we've been joined by the, the principal, Mrs. Nyamai, and she wants to say hello to you. Una mutua.
media other than my colleagues. And as, uh, as we continue, as Madam has said, I'm the principal here, and these are my children. How many are them? So I want to thank you so much first for coming, for bearing yourself. Even now, I'm just from the hostel. But we must come out in our good to see our water's benefit. So thank you for coming. And we are now going to Mambia. Wow, I miss something that is very big. We put our Mambia. And uh, I wanted to continue to say that. Did you know that the, the this issue to do with mental health, this issue to do with the psychological issues. The issue to do with our minds, it is something that is very important such that when a youth like you hears about it, you just go running, you go and hear what is happening. Because as I was reading and I was going through some information, I was reading some researches from people and actually what I picked up was from the WHO. But uh, in, one, in, in, a, in a population or in the world population, of youth, people of your age, one in seven people, and that is the 15 percent of the world population. Just imagine how many billions of those people. They have one or more mental or substance disorder, and you know the, these disorders. There are so many that tell and I do I am not an expert, but you need to be a true psychiatrist and some other nurses. But uh, I know kuna anxiety, kuna mood, kuna tension, and kuna behavior disorders. So when you, you hear about these things, I know they talk more about them. They also tell you what to do about them. But one appalling thing that I've discovered as a principle, and as I come across your lives, is that most of you are somebody from one or two disorders of this mellow sandwich. <laughs> For example, why can you fail? Why do you fail to come to class? Why do you go drinking and you don't come to class? Is it that psychological problem? Eh? Why are you stealing drugs from the hospital? Eh? And why are we finding some things to do with the Wanita cannabis and never manita bands? Tisha smoked. So those are some of the things. But today, I'm not talking, I'm just telling you to listen to them. And uh, uh, again, I want to thank you so much. Please be encouraged. We appreciate you. You are doing a very great job. And thank you so much, Salome. You have always been with us. When you went to the hospital, I think you have been with us. I think you have been with us in the perspective of celebration of the Mind of Health Day. Thank you, thank you very much. Asante. Okay, thank you so much, Molly, for even giving us an opportunity to come and talk with your children. Even to me, she was finally family brandy.
at home you are a stranger. In the, in the campus where you are, you are a stranger. You don't have a close friend. The people that you talk with are the ones that are going out partying. And you, 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 you fail to remember that you came alone and you go home alone. When you come here, always remember where your origin. When you're in this blue uniform, all of you are the same. But we have come from different backgrounds, isn't it? Why do you come and help to understand that? Why do you want to live like me? And you don't know where I come from. Yeah? You don't know what are my responsibilities. Might be when I'm getting pocket money of 100 days, there's somebody who's getting a pocket money of 
on after all is just for a we are here just for a season for a season and a reason so then we have to adjust a clip and a small one then we ask ourselves what led to that what led to that boy from the kids we say what led to that boy breaking up everything in their house <coughs> anger and cases of isolating themselves up to the level of committing what? Suicide. So,
where are you seeing yourself in the next five years? But you can go by college. You can go back. Job. Hustle. Hmm? So before I, I give the mic to the principal, I was talking about the many nurses that I did. And I say that it is not only nurses who have problems, but even other people within the health department. Like for now, there are several that have gone for rehab, they have come back and they have not recovered. They, they go for rehabilitation services, they stay there, the doctor mentioned about a good rehab, you go there for three months. And then after that is needed is and then you come back. When they come back, they come claiming how safe they have been. When my body leave, we didn't have it. You felt you felt that they have gone back the same path. Why? Because they had that thing that we call ability to say no. They leave their colleagues outside drinking, who can be able to control themselves, and when they come, they will come back. Come. And then they go back to the to the trap, to the trap. Are we together? So learn to say no. There are others who have been touched. Why? Those small, small habits that we talked about, that you start taking the drugs from the from the walls. The drugs that pumps. The drugs that can lead to addiction. And then after that, they become addicted completely. And they cannot be able to control themselves. When you come into the world, kindly don't involve in things that can make you go astray. When I was in school, this there was a we call them the anesthetists. When you want to was a theater. So there was one who was a consultant. He used to inject himself. And then one normally causes or makes the muscles to relax. Are we together? So, and he did not come and I said, Mama, you want to try to close it. And I did not And then after, we did not come, and I found a name, and I did not, and I did not. And I was a good shot closer. We can put a new hand for closer, you are going to be. We got it. Is that the right that you want? Are we together? Eh? That's a new, and I'm still, this is a new one. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so this one, this is a clip of a boy, a 12 year boy, whose mother picked the iPhone. Can I have an iPhone? Can I have an iPhone? Can I have an iPhone? You know that phones and phones. <laughs> But now it is the high time to reflect on, on it. Just 